This is a special presentation of Way 31 Sports. Ragged rights were on the line tonight in our big game Friday night game of the week as 8-1 Westminster hosted an undefeated Madison Academy team at home. While in our rivalry game of the week, it's a Jackson County showdown, two playoff teams squared off between North Jackson and Pisgah. Hello and welcome into the Week 10 edition of Big Game Friday Night. Everyone, thanks for making Way 31 your home for high school football. Nolan and I joined here by Max Cohan and Max with the final regular season week here and all the playoff spots locked up in North Alabama. One thing was on the line tonight. That's bragging rights. Yeah, and that was the main storyline for this week's Big Game Friday Night Game of the Week as a Westminster Christian team was hoping to claim its first ever win over Madison Academy. The Wildcats at 8-1, the Mustangs at 9-0. So who would come out on top tonight? Two region champs going head-to-head -head with the Mustangs looking to cap off a perfect regular season with a win over the Wildcats. And Madison Academy has won all seven of their previous meetings with Westminster, taking a step towards eight as Ken Cherry takes the first play from scrimmage all the way to the house for a Mustangs touchdown. The Cats couldn't get anything going at first, and the Stangs put the ball back in Cherry's hands, and he'll lose it, and it's picked up by Derek Cumberland the second. So it's Wildcat ball with excellent field position, and they get wild with it. Brandon Mush hands it off to start the end around and Houston Scott tosses it to a wide open TJ Carter and this game is tied, but not for long. Facing a fourth and short, the Stangs give it back to Cherry and check out this sweet run. Around the edge and all the way in as Madison Academy charges back. Now as dangerous as Mush is, the Mustangs kept him contained, consistently putting their offense back on the field. And after Jacob Poldiak goes fishing for Jaden Etienne, the Mustangs go running again. This time, it's Joshua Williams, and all of a sudden, things are getting out of hand. And the Mustangs end the regular season 10-0, capping off their first perfect regular season since 2020 with a 47-7 win. Uh, just, uh, I was proud of the way our guys played tonight. We handled some adversity there early. You know, bad snap, turnovers, playing a really good team in, in Westminster. So I was really proud of how our guys responded uh, in, in all facets of the game. So uh, just excited to get this win uh, and excited about, you know, next week. Well, we just want to do kind of do our thing, you know, and, and control the ball offensively and then and get after them defensively. And, and once again, like I said, they have an outstanding team. Uh, Brandon Mush, an outstanding player. Really proud of how we contained him in their offense tonight. And, and, as, and a lot of that goes to our offense, being able to, to, to churn out drives and, and limit his possessions. It's win or go home, you know, so, you know, survive and advance, however you want to put it. Uh, let's, you know, same message. Let's just keep getting better. Oh, there's going to be all kind of things that, that we, we're going to find that we can do better. Uh, and we're going to look for that, you know, and it's the first time that, you know, a lot of our guys have, have had to play four quarters in a while. So, uh, you know, the conditioning thing, you know, that, that helped us as well. But uh, just, just excited to be advancing, excited to what our guys have accomplished up to this point. And, and uh, you know, praise God for the opportunities that we have. Yeah, I would not want to see them in the playoffs. How about we stay in Class 4A Region 8? Because tonight at Discovery Middle School, the JP2 Falcons were finishing up their season with a showdown against 3A Elkmont. Elkmont just missed out on the postseason on the wrong side of a tiebreaker, but they were hoping to still end their season on a high note. Down 21-0 early, but they get on the board. Quick pass to Owen Burgess. That makes things 21-6. But that's when Elkmont would make it a one-score game after getting the ball back on an onside kick. They go to the air. John Donor is going to... Gift Ethan Adams with his best score of his career. Adams cuts across field, shakes off the tackler, locates the pylon, and dives in for the score. The Falcons would lace a little time responding. Luke Soggy back to pass, no one's open, pulls it, dives for the pylon. That's a touchdown, an impressive score for the senior on senior night as the Falcons go on to win at home 42-20. 
to finish off their season. We obviously can't wait for the postseason to get here, and today we had a few games that took place between teams that will be in action in the postseason next week, like at Madison City Stadium tonight, where Bob Jones was hosting Hartzell. Yeah, but both the Pats and the Tigers gearing up for that postseason run, and tonight it would be the Patriots who are moving the ball early. Anthony Benton looks to let one fly, but that pass is going to be intercepted. Whit Chrysler comes up with the pick despite the helmet getting snatched off. But after going three and out, the pass would go back to the air this time. Malachi Foster airs one out, converting this pass to Jackson Dean. He comes down with it to set up first and ten. And when you're on the goal line, the offense is easy. Just give it Tyron Washington. The pass do just that. It pays off. The big back rumbles in to the end zone for the lead. But it wouldn't take long for Hartzell to respond. Peyton Steele calls his own number. The senior quarterback rushes in for six. Hartzell on the board. They go on to win this one 35-21. They are rolling into the 6A playoffs with the win. Next week, they'll take on center point while Bob Jones travels to Hewitt Trusted. Another 6A, 7A game taking place was the one at Sparkman tonight. The undefeated Muscle Shoals Trojans looking for their fourth win of the year over a 7A team. And Muscle Shoals has dominated this season, outscoring opponents by more than 200 points. And tonight is another night for a Trojan invasion. Hand off to Jacques Green, and he is off green in the green grass for a huge gain before he's thrown down. But he'd have another chance to find pay route soon after. And on this play, number five is going in for six. Just like that, Muscle Shoals put in the lead. And right there, they're going to keep their foot on the gas. Sending a squib kick to the Senators and watching it bounce back into their hands as Luke Mosley dives in for the recovery and they turn that into points as well. Nathaniel Phillips has Hayden Vance in the end zone and the Trojans are in war mode. They stay undefeated with the 48-7 win over the Senators. Impressive stuff. Speaking of 7A schools, Albertville this year were unable to claim a region win this season, but tonight they did have a chance to end their season on a high note with a win against a playoff team in Gunnersville. How about one of the state's oldest rivalries taking place here? We'll pick up Albertville looking to get something going, and they do. A nice strike to Hunter Smith. It's a first down for the Aggies, but that drive would eventually stall, and Gunnersville took over. Eli Morris and looking to throw, he finds Trayvon Avery in the flats. This guy, shifty. He's going to pick up a first down, and the Wildcats would keep on rolling. Handoff this time through the defense, down the sideline, a big first down. This time they're going to try to hand it off to Julian Jordan in the back, finds a hole, bounces it outside, sprints for the sideline. He's knocked out at about the three. Then later, he would find the end zone. He's going to take another handoff in for the score. Gunnersville, they go on the road. They walk away with a big win, 57-16 over the Aggies. That clinched them a region championship tonight. Looking at some other scores that took place this evening, we had a playoff type game between Fairview and Randolph. The Raiders hope to keep that momentum alive, but they fall on the road 41-7. Well, at Lawrence County tonight, the Red Devils squared off against Wilson and looked dominant, taking down the Warriors 42-8. All right, folks, it's already time for us to call our first time out of the show. But don't go anywhere, because when Big Game Friday Night returns, we head to Pisgah for a Jackson County showdown in our Big Game Friday Night Rivalry Game of the Week. Stay tuned for more Big Game Friday Night. Go Patriots! You're watching Big Game Friday Night. Go Wildcats! It's the McCurry Band. Welcome back into Big Game Friday night, everyone. The final week of high school football's regular season is here, and with all the playoff spots in North Alabama already locked up. Yeah, and because of that, all that was on the line tonight, bragging rights. And that's exactly what was going on in our rivalry game of the week. North Jackson made the trip to Pisgah to take on the Eagles. Two playoff teams facing off against each other tonight. We'll pick up the Pisgah Eagles leading the Chiefs of North Jackson 36-8 at the start of the second. And they were knocking on the door again. Leachie McCleary trying to get something going. Going to be knocked out by two Chiefs defenders. Pisgah in a tight spot. Third and 18. They pick up a nice gain of eight there to make it fourth and ten now. Mason Holcomb is going to connect with Levi Horton, setting up a big first down and then a touchdown pass to McCreary in the end zone. Six more for Pisgah, 42 to eight. The Eagles, they are playoff ready as they win this one, 50-24. They will host Pleasant Valley next week in a game that head coach Luke, Luke Pruitt is looking forward to now that it's all focused on the playoffs.
We come in, you know, it's a county game, it's a rival. Um, but we, we challenge them to try to be physical this week and start fast, and that's what we were able to do. I'm proud of our kids. You know, we came out and um, answered the bell. We had a turnover early, and we didn't we didn't um, let up. We kept playing, and proud of our kids for that. And we kept pouring it on. We got one before halftime. It kind of put it put it away, and we told them we need to get a stop in the second half and go stick it in. That's what we did. So we're proud of our kids. Um, you know, next week it's a clean slate. You know, that's the thing. Everybody's not going to be in. Um, so we got to go one and zero. Figure out how we're going to go one and zero each week, and that's how we got to take it one game at a time. And uh, we've talked to the kids about that. We wanted to make sure we cleaned up this week, but that's what we got to do. Go one and zero next week. Figure out a way, whatever it takes. Let's stay in Jackson County and head out to Scottsboro for this next one. The Cater missed out on the postseason this year, but had a chance to finish their season on a high note with a win over a playoff-bound Wildcats team who was playing for home field advantage. And the Wildcats hoping to snap a four-game skid to the Red Raiders. Getting plays like this one will help. On the first snap of the game, Jake Jones says go long, and Jaden Gilbert does, hauling in the pass on the other side of the logo and turning on the Jets for a quick strike score. So now Decatur decides to give it a try. Braden Duper letting it rip, but he throws it just a hair too far, and it lands in the hands of Quincy Franklin, and now it's off to the races. He'll go for a little jog before he's dragged down. The interception wouldn't prevent the Red Raiders from throwing the ball, but they would have limited success with it as the Wildcats go on to win this one. 35 to 20 and clinch home field advantage in the playoffs next week. Yeah, there were plenty of fun showdowns taking place this week as county rivals squared off all throughout the state. At Lexington, the Bears were hosting their rivals in Rogers and fall to the Pirates 29-26. Well, at Phil Campbell, it was a Franklin County showdown between Phil Campbell and Red Bay. And the Tigers take home Brighton Rex, a 52-20 win over the Bobcats. And speaking of Franklin County Schools, the Russellville Golden Tigers claimed the Class 5A Region 8 crown last week with a win over Fairview, and this week found themselves taking on a playoff team in Class 6A in Athens in a matchup that Gold member would love. The Golden Tigers looking to end the regular season with four straight wins. Here, Golden Eagles quarterback Brogan Gross is looking for a first down, but is picked off by Malachi Duncan, who takes it back for a pick zero. He will not reach the end zone, but Russellville would on the next drive a little bit later. It's Gross with a nice pass to Jay Sean Riggle, who picks up the first down, and something seems to be going for the Golden Eagles, but a little bit later, Gross is going to get picked off again as he tries to escape a massive amount of pressure, and it would look for most people like Russellville was going to go on to win this game. They had the momentum, but what you see is not what you get this time. Athens takes home the win 41-14. to yeah, speaking of playoff teams playing in Limestone County tonight, Mae Jimison hit the road to take on a 2-7 and seven East Limestone team as the Jags were hoping to gain a little confidence going into the postseason as they clinched a playoff spite spot despite sitting at just 3-6 and six on the year. We'll start with Mae Jimison up 14-7 to seven in a rough play for East Limestone's Jake Cochran, who was slammed to the ground by Mae Jimison's Lamage Wallace who celebrates with a little dance for the big sack. Nice play, big guy. Jaguars with the ball and sophomore Jaden Burroughs hands it off to halfback Amir Hall, who slips in between the Indians' defense for a big first down. The Jags would look to keep the ball moving. Tossed it to Varion Moore Langford, the shifty back. Makes a little bit of something out of nothing, but eventually the Jags Jaguars would be forced to punt. It's the Indians that would take a stab at it. They couldn't get much going either. A big, big game here. May Jimison went up big in this game, but it's East Limestone that pulls out a win 29-28. to They win it on a late two-point conversion. Speaking of Huntsville High School teams, tonight at Boaz, the Lee Generals were in action, hoping to finish their year on a high note, taking on a Pirates team that snuck into the playoffs. Boaz looking to ramp up for the postseason and getting things started on the right foot as Presley Fant takes the handoff and gets through the line. And one fan is yelling at the top of his lungs for this first down. He'd have another reason to cheer even louder on his next carry. A near identical run, but this one will go to distance as Boaz finds the end zone. And the ground attack was working for the Pirates, and Pirates aren't known to change their ways so they don't stop. Feeding Fan again and again for big pickups. They'd give him a rest and let Tristan Shoulders finish off the drive as Boaz rolls on with a 48-14 win. Well, let's go ahead and step aside for our second time out of the show. Yeah, but don't go anywhere because when Wade 31 returns, we're going to head up to Lincoln County where the Tennessee High School Football Playoffs are on the way.
right, listen to that. A big congratulations to the Westminster Christian Marching Band on being named this week's Star Market Spirit Award winners. They're 57 members strong and have been rated superior in every category that they've competed in this year. Quite impressive. All right, well, now let's get back to some football here in Alabama. The playoffs begin next week, but our friends in Tennessee started their postseason this weekend. And tonight at Fayetteville High School, the Tigers were hosting a week one matchup against Monterey. And over the Tennessee state line, it's Fayetteville and Monterey in the first round of the playoffs. And the Tigers had a reason to roar early. Samuel Willoughby running the option, and he takes it himself. It ends up being a very good call as he leaves the entire Monterey defense chasing him on this 65-yard touchdown run. Willoughby said it was going to be a long night, and he proved it. The snap isn't clean this time, but it doesn't matter. He has Ken Henderson, and one tackle later, he is gone for a 35-yard score. And the Tigers will roar into the second round with their 39-14 win. They'll play Smith County next Friday. Another 7A school that was in action last night taking on a 6A school was Huntsville. The Panthers missed out on the postseason but had a chance to make some noise on senior night. Yeah, it was a great crowd at Milton Frank Stadium considering the cold air last night. The student section and attendance wouldn't have to wait long to have something to cheer about. Jackson McClung Lex one fly. He connects with Ashton Caldwell in stride. The senior on senior night gets in for the score, surfing his way to a 7-0 lead for the Huntsville Panthers. Hazel Green hoping to avoid going winless this year. They would start their first drive out well. Christian Carter connects with Franklin Anderson and the speedy receiver is able to pick up a Trojan first down. But from there, Hazel Green will be forced to punt and the Panthers went back to work. McClung again, this time rolling to his left, connecting with another senior receiver. This time it's Gardner Farrell. Huntsville misses out on the postseason this year, but win their final game of the season, 56-13. We've talked a lot about playoff type atmospheres tonight. Well, that's exactly what we had last night at Sylvania. Two 8 and 1 teams squaring off in a DeKalb County showdown. The Rams hosting the defending state champion Fife Red Devils. And it's always a great atmosphere at Sylvania. And when your county rival comes to town, it only gets better. We pick up with the Rams leading by a touchdown when Fife would get their offense going. But this time through the air, Clancy Fowler on the receiving end of this one. And the Red Devils would score on that drive. And then take the lead on their next possession. This might be a candidate for play of the year. Logan Anderson breaks a tackle. Stiff arms two guys at once. Cuts by behind another, breaks one more tackle for good measure, but it's just another day at the office for the junior from Fife, and now the Red Devils are ahead. Sylvania made their fair share of plays last night too, like this nice completion to Logan Wilkes, but in the end, it's not enough. F. Fife wins the rivalry game, taking the showdown 21 to 10. Next up for both schools, a home playoff game. Yeah, and finally turning a spotlight on another game from last night. Let's take a second to give a big shout out to the Lauderdale County Tigers. They dominate their county rival Brooks last night, 33-3, finishing their regular season undefeated. All right, guys, well, with that, let's go ahead and call our third and final timeout of the show. But don't go anywhere, because when we close things out tonight, we turn our attention to Class 1A. Falktown on the road, taking on Whitesburg. Welcome back into Big Game Friday night, everyone. The regular season has officially come to a close, and although no playoff spots were claimed tonight, it was a final chance for seniors to take the field. Yeah, and that's why we brought you a full slate of games this week to give all of our local athletes their chance to be featured on Big Game Friday night. Senior night at Whitesburg Christian. The Warriors hosting Tharptown tonight. The Wildcats would look to throw, but look out because Elijah Cook is chefing something up. An interception. Warriors ball. And the Warriors, they were cooking up a score as well. Hand off to Tobin Rager. And the halfback takes this one, cuts across the field, finds a hole, and he's gonna power his way across the goal line for a Whitesburg touchdown. The Warriors, they finish their season with two straight wins after starting 0-8 to finish 2-8, a 44-0 win. All right, well, before we do sign off for the night, we would like to just take this time to thank our radio sponsors for help making tonight's show possible. And of course, a massive thank you to everyone that helps this show possible here inside the studio as well. From our 
EP, Sarah Jones, to all of our shooters on the sideline. Derek King, he's got a limp foot, but went all the way up to Tennessee to get us a game tonight. A big thank you to all of our shooters, as well as Derek, for making tonight's show possible. We could not do it without them. And to finish off this week's show, we'll end the same way we do every week with our big game, Friday Night Top Lights. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Special presentation of Wave 31 Sports.